Welcome to this lesson on numbers with decimals, place value. This again is a introduction and brief recap of work that should have been covered in previous grades or years. Now you may notice that this top section here seems to have a lot more letters and words in it than it did last time. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this little dot here a lot, lot bigger because that's our decimal point. Now numbers can go down into what we have tenths and hundredths and thousandths and it goes on and on and on but works in very much a similar way as we've dealt with before. All whole numbers go before the decimal point. So if I have the number 47 which we dealt with last time I wouldn't write it here because that now means something very very different. We've got to think of 47 as being a whole number and a larger number than 1. So 47, again 40, is 4 tens and 7 is 7 units. So in this situation we would write 47 as 47 but in the right columns. What about the number 326? Well, 300, 326. Remember from our previous lesson that if we were to think of the number 326 in expanded notation, then we would write that as 300 plus 20 plus 6, right? or 326. 300 goes into the hundreds column, 20 into the tens column, and 6 goes into the units. Hmm, but what about numbers that do have decimals in them? Well, 27 point four is a number with a decimal in it and that point there the decimal point actually helps us line the numbers up in exactly the right place so if we now look at our number which was 27.4 20 two tens seven units point four that four now stands for four tenths what is a tenth well, a tenth is where we take a number, a whole number, and we tend to split it into ten equal parts. So one tenth is generally thought of as 0 0.1. Two tenths is 0 0.2. Three tenths, 0 0.3. Four tenths, 0 0.4. And so it goes on. So in this case, I have four tenths. Interesting. So what would a number... 36.87 look like. Let's get rid of our previous numbers and write it on. So this decimal point, remember, is really important. I'm going to write that in under my decimal point. What do you notice about the 8? It's the first number after the decimal. What do I notice about the 7? It's the number after the 8. Or it's 7 one hundredths. And the 36 can be written as 36. So that decimal point is awesome because, as I say, it gives us a marker to know where to put our numbers. Ooh, harder number, harder number, 248.032, for example. There we go, there's my decimal point. I'm going to write my decimal point in. So I've got the 0, the 3, and the 2 after, and I've got the 8, the 4, and the 2 before, and there is my number. 200, and look, it's lining up. The 2 is in my 100 column. The 4 is in my 10s column. The 8 is in my units column, and so it goes on. So writing decimal numbers in the right places can be quite easy, or maybe easier than previously because of that decimal point. But how would I write numbers in expanded notation? We can write numbers in expanded notation in much the same as we did the last way. So let's come up with a simple number first. 97.4. Now, as I said in the last video, it might be easier to try and write expanded notation coming in columns first, so coming down the page first. What do I mean? Well, let's draw a line under here for the moment, just so I know where I'm going. 9. That is the same as 90. We know the 9 is in the tens column. It's the same as 90. Now we have the 7. The 7 is 7 units. The decimal point is there to help us work out where our numbers sit. And the 4, I can now write down 
under here as 4. But it looks a bit odd, because what that really is, if you remember, is 4 tenths is the same as 0 0.4. So I would need to write that as 0 0.4. Well, that's good, because look, the point copies down, the 4 is in the right place, and we put a zero in front of a number so that we know it's a number less than one. If I now look at this and write it out in long ways, I've got 90 plus 7 plus 0 0.4. And there we go. That is my expanded notation. Awesome. 97.4 is written as 90 plus 7 plus 0 0.4. Let's look at something slightly harder. What about... 200 and, sorry, 2,462.18. Same way as we did before. Let's start thinking of these numbers in terms of writing them out in columns and what the actual number stands for. Well, the 2 stands for 2,000, so I can write 2,000. I don't really need to write the decimal point at the moment because it's 2,000. What does the 4 stand for? Well, the 4 stands for the 400, but I can copy that down. The 4 drops down and I fill with two zeros. Plus the 6 drops down and I put a 0. And the 2 drops down. Now we get to our decimal numbers. So let's think about it. I've got a decimal number. Let's put the point in and the 1 fits down. But we've got to have a 0 in front so that we know it's a number less than 0. And the 8 does the same. So there's my decimal point. There's the 8. I have to remember to put a zero in because it's in the second column after the decimal and the zero there to show that it's a number less than one. And if we now write all of this out in expanded notation, we have 2000 plus 400 plus 60 plus 2 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.08. And again, listen to how I actually say that. Saying these words is quite important because we have two and the comma. If you remember, 2,462, then we actually say point and we list the numbers or we just read off the numbers. We would never read this as 2,462.18. That would make no sense and is not how we do it. So that becomes 2,462.18. This is a really short video dealing with expanded notation. We'll do an example where we do things backwards and then we'll move on to something slightly different. All right, so there we go. We have our number down the bottom, which seems to be written as 6,000 plus 700 plus 40 plus 6 plus 0 0.8 plus 0 0.01 plus 0 0.006. And again, these decimal points are really, really important because they help us line up our numbers. So let's start with our biggest number here is 6,000. So where does that stand? That goes into our 6,000 column. 700s, 700s, 40, which is four tens, 6, which is six units, and my decimal point because I've got numbers less than one. 0 0.8 is eight tenths, so it's the first number after the decimal. 0 0.01 puts our one in here because that stands for one one hundredth or it's the second number after the decimal place and 0 0.06 puts our six here and so our number is 6,746.816. Easy! Okay, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.